All right, we're in vid number two, vid number two for this uh, map assignment number one. And uh, it's really important to follow the instructions. They're very specific about what steps to do. This program can get kind of tricky if you don't know exactly what you're doing. What's this in the background? Let's hide that. Um, so uh, we've uh, been messing with the tools and stuff. What we need to do now is kind of adjust the size and shape of the box we just put in and make it a stage. So uh, I mentioned it a few minutes ago, we're gonna go back to viewport one about selection. You can select by using the select tool and clicking on an object. Sometimes that's difficult. I'm trying to do that right now. Um, dragging a marquee or a, box, a selection tool around it will work, but if you have a lot of objects next to each other, that tends to select all the objects. One of the most reliable methods is to go over here into your inventory tab. An inventory tab alternates with express settings tab. And below the inventory tab, you will see these different categories, geometry, single processor, loudspeaker systems, and microphones. We're dealing with geometry right now, and this particular geometry, when I select it here, you can see it gets highlighted. We could even name this, which it did not do in the instructions. Uh, so I'll stay, I'll keep consistent here. It's called cuboid one. And uh, I can always just select by clicking there. And I find that a much more effective method than using the select tool. Okay, so now that we've done that, we've learned how to select, we wanna shape this into a stage. Um, there's two basic methods for uh, editing geometry and changing its shape and location. The first method is, is over here in the properties tab. As long as you have something selected, the properties tab pops up and we can change its position here and its size and shape here. Obviously we're talking about X, Y, and Z coordinates and I'll, I'll talk about them in a moment. Let's see what the instructions tell me to do. It wants me to zero everything out. So I'm gonna do zero, zero, zero. So it's gonna locate this object at what we call the origins of our, of, of our model. So let's do that. We're gonna put these uh, object at zero, zero, zero. Now it zoomed away completely. I'm going to hit the zoom to extent button to find out where it is. I'm going to zoom out here. You can see it's right smack in the center of the blue, red, and green origins. Uh, and so what is really the deal with these green, red, and, um, uh, and blue origins? These are, you know, measure polar, a system of polar coordinates in order to measure where an object is in 3D. And you have to get used to this pretty quickly. It's, this is kind of one of the, the tricky things right away, but you can see Y axis is green, blue is, is uh, let me zoom out a little bit more. Typically you, you do here, this is our venue, if this is our stage, and we're about to make it stage, and this would be the audience over here. Blue, our Z axis is our height, Y tends to be our width of our venue, and red, the X axis, um, is our depth of our venue. I'm going to select this object here, and that's uh, reinforced here. Um, and so the next thing I want to do is uh, edit the size of and shape of this particular object. I want to make it more stage-like. And instead of doing it over here in properties, I, I could do it right there. I could put my dimensions right there in properties. But I also want to do it here in uh, object settings, another nice place to do it. Whatever you have selected, and you can see I still have the cuboid selected. This object setting tab, it kind of gives you all the information. This is really an enlarged version of the properties tab here. And we want to change this sh uh, the, the dimension to be something specific. It says here 50, 52. So we're going to make it 50 feet deep, 50 feet wide, and 2 feet high. So it looks more like a stage. I'm going to go back to my model view and look at it. And you can see it, that's going to be our stage in this particular situation. Uh, but let's look at this in, in dimensions other in, 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 uh, in, in different viewports. If I hit the multiple tab here, you can see there, there it is in isometric 3D view, there's top down, and of course this is uh, what front and side view. And what you'll notice is that the, the origins are right smack in the center of the object, of the geometry. This means our 000 is within the stage itself. It's below the floor of the stage. And this does not make much sense. In uh, when we typically do loudspeaker predictions and venue modeling, we put the, we put the 000 origin uh, the dimensions at which everything is measured by within the venue. We put this at a, at a pretty uh, 
easily uh, locatable and easy to get to location. Common places would be like in the smack dead center of an arena or right below the proscenium um, in a theater. That's what we do in the Gracie or uh, center stage, downstage is a common place. And so we want to do that. We want to move this object so it locates and um, we don't have the 000 origin stuck in the middle of the stage. So this gets a little bit complicated here. Um, there's a lot of instructions here exactly what to do. I'm moving kind of quickly here, but let's move back to viewport one so we can see it in 3D. And what we're gonna wanna do is mess with the vertex of this object. And this is a little kooky in this version. And, and I, ha I have to tell you, I mean, I'm using a beta version of the software. It has not been released publicly yet. And this, for this, this particular um, uh, process I'm about to do may change in later versions and this video may become outdated. But essentially I need to select this guy and I'm gonna right click on it. And I'm gonna hit select vertex out of the drop, out of the, out of the uh, pop-up menu. And at this point, I can click on uh, the geometry and move this little yellow dot around. And it can be located on the line, in the middle between lines. It can be located in corners. It can be located in the middle. And what we wanna do is put it up on top of the stage and in the center. I'm gonna confirm that with the instructions. Yep, see it's hanging above red. And so that's gonna become our zero, zero, zero value. Now to do this, uh, I'm going to, this is kind of weird, and this is the part of the software I hope they fix. I have to right click again, hit select object, and then I need to very specifically hit return. Now I'm out of that mode. Uh, and now when I select this object, you'll notice that that yellow dot is now there. It was in the middle, it's now there. That is the thing that is located uh, to wherever you position the, um, the object. So we're gonna position that object in a moment here. We're actually gonna zero it all out again. So it's gonna be zero, 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 zero. So I'm gonna go back over here and say zero, zero, zero. And now essentially the stage, that's going to be our front center of the stage. That's our zero crossing. And if I go to, to my multiple view, you can see that the vertex is on top of the stage. It's not within or below the stage. So the stage, counts into negative feet, but that's okay. The top of the stage is going to be at zero. So that's a really important thing to do. It's a little complicated at first. Next and kind of a final step here in making the stage is make it a prediction plane. We do that over here again um, in our geometry. We can actually do it here in object settings as well. There's two ways of doing it. You either click prediction, you've got your keyboard selected and this thing's gonna turn blue. You can also do it over in here somewhere where uh, I, I, I don't think I um, have an issue with. Oh, you can actually do each face differently. Each little side of it can be separately predicted. That's kind of cool. But this just does the whole unit, which is fine for us right now. And now that we've done that, and I'm gonna go out to model view, later, as you'll see in a moment, by making it a prediction plane, we'll be able to see the amplitude uh, of the prediction in this on this surface. We wouldn't be able to see that otherwise. Okay, that's a great place to stop. We have just completed our creation of the stage. So see you in a moment.